Today we are talking about Pitch Blender or Uraninite. This video is basically a follow up to the video I shot with Marvin in the Black Forest. Here's a very brief and inadequate summary. Marvin and I were out and about on various stockpiles in the Black Forest looking for uranium bearing minerals. We found what we were looking for. There were fluorescent minerals to be found on granite. And this is where the big difference to the ore mountains come in. I will continue calling the Ore Mountains the Erzgebirge because I find that Wikipedia suggested translation a bit silly. In the Black Forest you are more likely to find beautiful fluorescent secondary minerals containing uranium, while in the Erzgebirge you will find the primary mineral of uranium, pitch blender. Of course you can find the other one too, but in this case it primarily affects the equipment you need. So simple nitrile gloves in large quantities are no longer necessary, but rather more sturdy gardening gloves. Masks are still recommended and I have now also purchased a geologist hammer. As always, sturdy shoes, bags, something to write with, etc. And the sponsor of today's video kindly provided me with some better equipment. Unlike last time, I am now using the Radio Code 103 with a protective cover and a stick. All things that were not available on my last excursion. This time I'm bringing in a cool gadget with me, a electronic personal dosimeter. Where exactly did we go? To Anton Stahl on day 1. It was already very cold and we were there in March 2025. Besides Marvin and me, Niklas from the channel Advanced Tinkering and Paul from the channel Moosmandel were also there. And while I was telling you all of this, I already found my first specimen with approximately 4000 CPS. Niklas has already shown what he's digging up there in one of his shorts. And that's it for day one. We actually searched for about three to four hours and we will look at the results after coming home. We got one microsievert. Yes, that's the same dose rate as everywhere else on the world. The next day we crossed the borders to Abatam. This sums up the first hour very well. Walking around such stockpiles is a bit more tolerated in the Czech Republic than it is in Germany. I will leave some of the original audio here, but now I gotta translate my thinking in German. So okay, there must be something here. I will put this stone outside the picture, but still in a place where I can remember it. There's a 50-50 chance that it's shielding the radiation or it is itself the source. If I put it away and the values increase, the source must be underneath it. Aha! More radiation. Okay, then away with this big chunk and oh well there goes the activity. Then it will be one of the two bigger chunks. Okay, so I'll measure increased values on both. Since I'm too lazy to get up again, I'll create a different measurement geometry and if the noise goes away, yes, okay, must be the other stone. The very dark black corner is probably the pitch blender. I found something else here but couldn't locate it and what caught my eyes was the yellow coloring. Not just because it's yellow but in the context of uranium it's oh, actually quite promising. And I will explain that to you later in the theory part. As we continue our search it is quite evident that our values are on a different scale compared to those in the black forest. A find with a contact dose rate of over 100 microsieverts an hour, you will not find that in the black forest. Next. These were our finds at the Czech border. And before we get into the car, well, there is no wet grass, but there is frozen grass. As we headed back home, we inserted a detour to Johann Georgenstadt and I will present these finds at home. But first, I will go into the lab to clarify a very important question. I completely understand if you are a bit paranoid about contamination or something like this. The problem isn't quite as bad with pitch blender as it is with secondary mineral, but just take a look at it. After the excursion, I packed everything into two bags and took it into the lab without doing anything. Even the dirty shoes and gloves I used to dig up in the uranium containing debris and often touch the uranium directly are completely free of contamination when it comes to radionuclides. And the protective cover from the radar coat is also not contaminated either. Of course it's important to work cleanly, have wet wipes and clean everything afterwards. But I wanted to reassure you a little bit that if you have worked cleanly there's no real need to worry any further. With pitch blender it's 
not that bad. But now, what did we find? It's all uraninite. This is the modern name for mineralic uranium oxide. We like to write it as a UO2. Anyone who paid attention in chemistry should now be able to deduce that the uranium in this compound has the oxidation state of plus 4. This is moderately stable. It is also important to mention how pitch blender is formed. The pitch blender in the Erzgebirge is of hydrothermal origin. In other words, the material came to the surface from the Earth's interior as a hot salt solution with uranium still dissolved in water under critical conditions. The most dominant compound for uranium is the triscarbonato complex. As the solution cooled near the Earth's surface, the uranium crystallized out as uraninite, which is particularly easy to do in a reductive environment. The reduction can take place, for example, through divalent iron ions that are present in the solution in parallel. This can happen with the surrounding rock, syngenetic, or afterwards, epigenetic. It is very likely that fault zones in the rock in this deposit cause the uranium bearing solution to reach the surface through very small cracks where the uranium originating from the granite was subsequently precipitated. Our findings have already been brought to the surface by miners and oxidation can occur at this point at the latest. In the first step oxidation to U307 can take place. However, this is something that is sometimes done in a laboratory, but this does not last long in nature. It continues to the much more stable U308, which is still black. Complete oxidation would have resulted in U03, which for all practical purposes does not occur in nature. You can see how the proportion of tetravalent uranium decreases with increasing oxidation and the hexavalent uranium content also increases. The term uraninite does not differentiate between oxidation states as long as the majority of the mineral is uranium oxide. Depending on how weathered the mineral is, one can confidently say UO2. However, I would like to point out that U308 cannot be ruled out. The name pitch blender is a very old term used by miners as they were actually looking for silver and uranium was completely worthless in the 18th century. The word was composed of pitch and a blender. Blender is perhaps familiar from zinc blender or manganese blender. It is often a sulfide but as we know from pitch blender this derivation would be incorrect. Rather these minerals all shine and indicate a very high metal content. It's just a metal and a counter ion. The mineral has a very high density which can only come from a high metal content. And yes in German terms you were just unlucky to find that stuff because pitch blender in Germany is called Pech blender and Pech is just a word for not having any luck. Pitch or Pech describes this black sticky stuff and in Germany there is a phrase if you get stuck to this pitch you are unlucky because no one wants that stuff on their clothes. Translated it would be to have pitch and which then later was synonymous for the word of this black gooey stuff. And it's a neat coincidence that the color of pitch actually represents the pitch blender mineral. What we can see here are mouse eyes or sometimes known as bubble ore or botryoidal ore. This is a very beautiful form in which uraninite can occur. Bubble ore is almost an inappropriate name for this specimen. Unfortunately, I was a bit unlucky. Niklas has found a much nicer one. And Marvin tops everything with this finding. There is not a bit of weathering, perfect bubbles, beautiful metallic luster, simply a beautiful specimen. And I would love to find something like this for my own collection. If you look at the minerals under 395 nanometer UV light, you will usually see nothing. This is because pitch blender does not fluoresce. In uranium minerals, if any, only secondary minerals fluoresce. But what is a secondary mineral? A secondary mineral is formed when a primary mineral undergoes weathering. And we are not just talking about physical weathering processes such as abrasion, something chemical has to happen to the mineral. Since uranium in solution easily forms complexes in the form of water soluble uranyl ions, we have the perfect conditions here of beautiful and colorful secondary minerals. These all look very pretty but unfortunately carry a much higher risk of contamination as they are not as strongly bound to the rock matrix and can easily flake off and crumble which is why we wore disposable gloves and masks even more often in the black forest. 
because secondary minerals are more common there. The fluorescence of secondary minerals can be suppressed or quenched if the uranate ion has other ways of releasing the excess energy, for example when copper ions are present, for example torbenite. That's a nice digression. But there will be a video about urinal fluorescence in the distant future. In addition to this video, which deals primarily with finding pitch blender in the Erzgebirge, I also plan to make a video about secondary minerals, but unfortunately I'm still missing a few specimens which I would like to present. Finally, what do I do with this? I store beautiful minerals where you can clearly see bands far away from places where other people are. The environment is also ventilated. The main danger of pitch blender are radon emanation, i.e. the radioactive gas that can be inhaled and of course the radiation itself. There is also a risk of contamination but it is much lower compared to secondary minerals. I personally know that people are so rarely in vicinity of this collection that I don't even need shielding because the normal place where you would stand and the radiation level is background level. I also don't label anything as being radioactive but I still label them and as a private individual you should also never label them as being radioactive because at least in Germany you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Yes, these stickers look cool but nothing for private ownership at least for German people but they have their own German version of this video so maybe if you are just interested in that stuff. I have to be honest I have no idea why I took some of them with me. They looked cool in the field but now at home they are just another unnecessary source of radiation. A big thank you to Marvin, Ben and Niklas for the very enjoyable collection trip and of course to my patrons for their financial support. With that being said thank you for your attention and goodbye.